Alright, hello guys. In this video, we're going to be presenting you our early November pattern video. We did two of these for October. We did the early October pattern, late October pattern. I think we did some in September as well. We're going to be talking about mostly the temperature pattern from the 1st through the 15th of November in this video. Now, before you start with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now let's get started with things. We're looking at our temperature anomalies here. This is for today at 12Z. We're going to be doing 12Z every day. And 12Z is around morning time. Uh, there's no particular reason why we're doing 12Z. We could do 18Z, 0Z. It's, it's not going to change too much. Uh, but we're going to be doing 12Z every day from the 1st to the 15th. So here's the 1st. You can see a lot of those pinks and purples is where we're looking at, you know, well below average temperatures. And then the light blues to medium blue, blues is where we're slightly to... Uh, moderately below average as far as temperatures. You can see on this map for today, basically the only areas that are above average temperatures is Florida, Maine, and then a little bit of California there. That's basically it with the exception of a few areas like Salt Lake City. I guess the lake is probably above average temperatures and that's probably why that's happening. Besides that, not a lot else. Now, let's move on to the 2nd of November here. And you could see New England cools off. So Maine, I think what happened is we're not seeing that cold front come through until later on tonight. And then by tomorrow, you will be experiencing the cool down. So you will be dealing with cooler and below normal temperatures. We still have those purples down there for the south central United States. You guys are probably loving that considering how much heat you guys had in September and August and maybe even July. I don't know, but it was very, very hot down there. We can see the West Coast is starting to get the most of that heat like I showed in my November forecast. If you haven't seen that already, you can check that out, by the way, on the channel. Now let's move on to the third, and you can see it's moving even further east. Really, the deep south is the furthest below normal temperatures, not to be confused with the furthest, um, the coldest temperatures, but the coldest comparatively to average temperatures down there in the deep south. Now we do have, again, those warmer temperatures building out west and the cooler air is moving further and further east. This is building the pattern that I expected to see in November. Now things are about to get really, really exciting as we move on to the fourth. As you can see, the heat is still building out in the southwest and we have more cold up there in Canada. That's the exciting part. It's going to bring more cold air down. Once again, we see this cold weakening quite a bit in the east. We're still dealing with the darker blues indicating moderately below average, 6 to 8 degrees below average Celsius, which is pretty far below average. Uh, but in the lighter blues, we're more like half a degree to 2.5 degrees. That's where you're not really noticing it. So if you're in the light blues, you're probably just feeling around average is a better term. Uh, but in the darker and medium blues, that's where we're looking at moderately below average, and you will notice that. Now, the southwest, again, is building even more of a ridge here in a little bit of Florida there. Again, in my November forecast in the eastern United States, the only area I had above average temperatures was the state of Florida. Let's move on to the fifth here, and you can see that ridge builds a little bit. We see Texas warm up, Oklahoma warm up, New England warm up, and a little bit of the mid-Atlantic as well. Here's the thing, guys. There is going to be warm-ups in between, especially if you're not on my monthly forecast, if you're not in the darkest shade of blue, there will be some warm-ups, and you're going to see that throughout this video, that there will be little one- or two-day warm-ups in between these cool-downs. The cool-downs last a lot longer, though, and are much more um, diff different than your average comparatively to the warmth that you would be seeing in some of these days. But this is by the 5th, and we're looking at a little bit of warmth for some of those areas. By the 6th, you can see the northeast starts to cool down. The mid-Atlantic starts to cool down a little bit. But again, it's those light blues. Those light blues are sneaky because it's just going to feel average. It's not actually going to feel that cold whatsoever. But as we move on to the 7th, things start to change big time. We see a lot more purple move in from Canada. You can see the Midwest is pink and purple. Very far below average. We do have a little bit of warmth still down there in the southeast for the 7th, but that is not going to last long whatsoever, as by the 8th, you can see that fully moves in to the northeast, mid-Atlantic, midwest, Great Lakes, and Great Plains of the United States, and the west just has a giant ridge out there, uh, but so for the most part, this is a trough in the east, ridge in the west pattern, very classic setup, and November, man, we've had a lot of cold Novembers in a row here, because I, from what I can recall... 
last November was cold, and I don't know about the one before that. I can't remember that far. But I'm pretty sure that one was cold as well. Let's move on to the ninth, though. You can see that a lot of that cold has arrived for the East Coast. That's the coldest day for the East Coast, actually. The European model has it on the 10th. The GFS model has it on the 9th, where we're going to be seeing the coldest temperatures from the 1st to the 15th, right around that 10th or 9th time frame. Both models are in great agreement on that. So I'm pretty confident that right there in the middle of this early November time frame is going to be where we see the coldest of the normal of the temperatures comparatively to average along the coast not for the midwest though it's actually not that cold up there on the 9th or 10th now let's move on to the 10th and you can see on the gfs the cold is actually moving out the mid-atlantic northeast and southeast are still a little bit below average but not nearly as cold as they were on the 9th in the midwest though we see that really cold temperatures arriving once again now for the 11th, we see that ridge return for the southeast and basically the east coast of the United States as we're pretty close to average and the southeast is actually a little bit warm. We have a little bit of sliver of, of pretty warm temperatures there from Oklahoma up to, into the southern Great Lakes regions just south of Chicago, but that's going to be pretty short-lived as by the 12th, we have very, very exciting stuff going on up there for the Midwest. You can see we have pinks, purples, and this is actually the coldest temperatures comparatively to normal on the entire model run here. As you see those very, very light pinks up there for a little bit of North Dakota, Montana, and Canada, that's where we're pretty much 28 degrees below average or more Celsius, which is just so far below average, it's insane. Uh, so that's going to be very frigid temperatures if this does occur. We actually have seen signs that these models think the polar vortex or even a little bit of a band of it, not the full thing, obviously, that we would see in January or February or December, but a little bit of a sliver of it could creep down into the United States and actually bring far below average temperatures. And I think that's what's happening here on the GFS. So we could see a little bit of effects from the polar vortex in November. This November is looking to shape up and be very, very interesting. One of the most interesting November patterns I've ever seen. Uh, and people around the weather community definitely agree with me on that. This looks to be an interesting November, to say the least. Now, let's move on to the 13th. You can see that cold expands around the Midwest and Great Lakes regions of the United States heading further south. We still have a southeast ridge a little bit there. Uh, obviously, those temperatures are 0.5 to 4 degrees above average. So, again, that's going to feel like average in the southeast on this frame. Maybe a little bit above average, but when the cold has arrived in the past, it's been far below normal. So that's why we're going to end up having below average temperatures for a lot of these regions still in the month of November, despite having some warm days, because the, when the cold comes, it's a lot stronger than when the warm comes on this model run. And by the 14th, you can see the cold air is back for the eastern United States. The northeast and the Midwest are still far below normal. The southeast, a little bit of a warm area there for Florida, Georgia, and, and Alabama. But again, we were kind of forecasting that to happen. In the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic, though, we're experiencing far below average temperatures to close out the first half of the month and the Midwest as well. Uh, and the Northwest is about average in the Southeast or the Southwest and uh, South Central United States, you can see is far above average on this frame. So Texas, you're kind of all over the place. You're going to end up being a little bit below average temperatures throughout this, but you're going to have warm ups and cool downs. So it's going to be all over the place seeing some relief from that heat, obviously, when we see those cool downs. And for the 15th, you can see things kind of lighten up a little bit for most of the lower 48. But you can see in the Midwest, we see another trough about to dig down and do the same thing we've seen throughout the 1st through the 15th. And it looks like we're going to stick in a pretty consistent pattern with these cool downs coming in and basically uh, heading towards the East Coast the whole eastern United States experiencing below average temperatures and then kind of heading back up and retreating and then we see that uh, rinse repeat and we see this over and over and over again throughout this video you've seen that happen probably three or four times so it looks like they're pretty sure we're going to head into a pretty consistent pattern with those troughs in the eastern United States and ridges in the western United States but you can see that a lot of the times the midwest is cold a lot of the times the east coast is cold but overall, my November forecast is looking good, and I'm pretty confident in it. It looks like, according to this, at least through the 15th, it'll verify very, very nicely.
Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to share it with your friends and family on Facebook if you do think they'll find it interesting or useful. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.